The Republican primary field for 2024 is getting more crowded by the day. You may have noticed that with Chris Christie, Mike Pence and North Dakota Governor Doug Burgum all expected to enter the race this week. But today, one other Republican who was considered a possible candidate announced that he's not running. New Hampshire Governor Kristen Nunu, a moderate, self-described pro-choice Republican who handily won re-election to a fourth term last year, writes in a Washington Post op-ed that, quote, our party is on a collision course toward electoral irrelevance without significant, cor significant corrective action. And that, quote, the stakes are too high for a crowded field to hand the nomination to a candidate who earns just 35 percent of the vote. And I will help ensure this does not happen. Strong words there. We all know which Republican primary candidate he means. I think we know. And Governor Sununu joins me now. So let, let's start with an announcement that we're going, you had a big news day today, but let's start with an announcement that we're going to see in New Hampshire tomorrow. Former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie is going to make his run official in your home state. You, neither of you hold back in criticizing Donald Trump. You have that in common. Do you think he has a path to beat Donald Trump in the primary? Oh, sure. Look, I, I think almost all the candidates have a very viable path to beating Donald Trump. And, you know, you just said it right there. Chris isn't shy about, about uh, you know, casting criticism where it is well-deserved with the former president. But this is the problem. All 12 of the other candidates need to cast the same type of criticism. Uh, it, because it's, it it's not that we're, we're there out there to beat Donald Trump. Donald Trump doesn't represent the Republican Party. Right. He's the outsider. And we've kind of let him get away with kind of co-opting, I think, what, what are tra better traditional ideals of the Republican Party of limited government and local control. He wants to relitigate the past. And if we're going to be successful in the Republican Party, we've got to move forward in the future. So I think Chris is a, is a very good candidate. I think they're all really good candidates. They're all my friends. I think there's a lot to play out. We haven't even had a debate yet. So uh, we're going to see who can take a punch, who can give a punch, who can really stand on that stage and make the case of America's future, not just worrying about litigating the past. Well, we know Governor Christie can give a punch. We don't know what his path is yet. We'll <laughs> see. But I do want to give you an opportunity to make a little news. So are you going to endorse Governor Christie tomorrow when he's in your home state? <laughs> no. Look, I love Chris. He's one of my better friends, really. But no, I'm, I may endorse somebody at some point, but that'll be down the road. They got to earn it, right? They got to be in the living rooms of New Hampshire. They got to go to the 99 counties in Iowa. They got to go to the fairs. They got to do the retail politics because that proves a sense of good retail management. And that's exactly what this country is looking for. Good retail managers that don't just talk about their issues, but that can listen and talk to the issues that are actually resonating with the, with the constituents. And that's the real difference. It's not about money or, 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 or headlines or any of that. It's about really connecting with people. So as you're watching this, you said very clearly that if a candidate isn't breaking through, they need to drop out by Christmas. I've been in politics a while. Candidates don't usually like to be told when to drop out. But are you going to be calling out specific candidates in public when you think it's time for them to go? If not publicly, are you going to be having these conversations sure. privately? How, what can we expect? No, look, I, I, it's not just me. I think there'll be a lot of voices calling out candidates. They got plenty of time, though. They have all fall to prove themselves, and anyone who wants to get in can, in, can get in. But it's not just the, the Chris Sununas of the world. It's, I think, going to be a lot of voices. They're going to be telling folks, hey, you gave it a shot. It's not there. The donor base, the donor base that has given money to these candidates have to be actually the first ones to say, I know I gave you a lot of money. It's not happening. Pull out. Let's narrow this field down. So it really has to be a resonating message so we don't have a repeat of 16. It looks like, uh, according to a lot of legal eagles, we could see another indictment for Donald Trump soon. Now, we know the hush money indictment didn't seem to change the dynamic. If anything, it seemed to help him in the polls. Do you think any indictment, yeah. an indictment on issues no. around no. other indictments could help other candidates or would hurt Trump? No. You don't think no. the indictments matter? No. No. I don't want to put words in your mouth. Obviously Tell me what you think. Don't. No. They don't. They absolutely don't matter. No. These indictments, uh, and if I may, a combination of the media... Um, you're, you're, you're creating a, the, the boy who cried wolf syndrome, right? What happened in, in New York was wrong. I mean, it really was. They are beating up on, on Trump for political reasons. Everybody sees that. What happened with the Russian collusion that never existed effectively exonerated the guy. So he can play a victim card. You've all created a situation where God, what, what kind of planet are we on where Donald Trump's become the victim? Well, but that's first of really all, I, what think, it is. I think we very... And so now we nobody know, believes it. Well, nobody believes it. We know, I have to stop you on there, because we know very clearly that Putin and the Kremlin did intervene in our election in order to try to help Donald Trump back in 2016. So we know that is true. But you may they think that they shouldn't engage in this as a messaging tool because it's not helpful to them. Is that what you're saying? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I'm not going to re relitigate, you know, the, the Russian collusion nonsense that went on for two years. You don't need to relitigate. It's been litigated that it was real. by, right. by lawyers yeah, yeah, and it's, investigations. It's, not, it's nonsense. But you, That's but now nobody buys. Nobody buys. Yeah, but but nobody buys that any attack on Trump isn't anything but political. You've created, everyone has kind of created this scenario, and he is playing it to the fullest. He's playing the violin strings better than anyone imagined, which is why his poll numbers miraculously are actually going up. So these candidates are going to have to get on the stage, talk about what they're going to do going forward. Every one of them has to call him out. If you're not calling out Donald Trump for the non-Republican that he really is, for the mistakes he made in the past, then you don't deserve to be on the stage. We're not here to run for vice president. We're not here to sell books. If you want to be president, then you better stand up and give it everything you got. And those candidates that don't do that aren't going to go very far. They're going to be driven out of the race. And we're going to get down to one or two candidates because one one on one, Trump and somebody else, he loses. He loses the nomination. And then the Republicans actually have a shot to win in, in 24. I think almost anybody would beat Joe Biden right now in 24, except Donald Trump. Uh, so I want to ask you about abortion. We've talked about this a little bit before. The range of candidates in the field have a lot of different positions. You are a, a pro-choice governor. How, what do you think the position of the party should be? And how should these candidates be talking about it on the trail? Look, I think it's really simple. Uh, Dobbs now says that the states can make their decisions, and they will. And everyone has to understand that California and Mississippi are going to have very different paths on abortion. And that's now up to the voters to decide whether they want their those legislatures and those governors to make those decisions. And so there's more voter connection there. That's the new reality. So anything that the Republicans are talking about in terms of national abortion bans and all that, it becomes a very scary message that can't be explained, and you drive independents and young voters away. And that's exactly the opposite of what we should be doing. We've got to bring them back onto the team. We've got to make them feel empowered, get them excited about something not confuse them with national abortion ban message. It, it just, it isn't what carries the day. We need to talk about inflation and energy independence and health care reform, uh, border security. These are the things that really matter at a national level and can be fixed. And if we're talking about abortion, we're getting distracted and probably losing voters in the process. New Hampshire Governor Kristen Nunu, thank you so much for joining me this evening. You had a big day.